Marcus Aurelius emphasized that no matter how difficult situations are, we have the power to decide how we react to them. Choose not to be hurt, and you will avoid feeling harmed. If you don't feel hurt, then you haven't been hurt, as Marcus Aurelius so wisely pointed out. Marcus Aurelius's guidance, although it seems simple, can be challenging to apply if we don't understand what causes us suffering and if we don't possess the wisdom to make a change. Fortunately, the ancient Stoics bequeathed us this valuable wisdom. Generally speaking, the amount of affliction we endure as human beings is largely subject to the twists and turns of fate, but varies from person to person. The Stoics often argued that someone with solid inner strength would suffer less than someone whose emotional well-being depends entirely on external circumstances. Certain situations can impact one person and not affect another in a similar way. Additionally, many people tend to carry past experiences as burdens for a long time, while others manage to overcome adversity and don't allow what happened in the past to damage their present and future. And just as common, these are the people who constantly feel damaged by things that haven't even happened yet, which may sound strange, but that's exactly what chronic anxiety does. It's not the events that occur in the outside world that cause us harm, but our thoughts, memories, and imaginings about them. Therefore, the key to developing resilience lies in our inner consciousness, which is the only part of human experience over which we have complete control. Stoic philosophy focuses on strengthening the mind rather than prioritizing any external factor, which is secondary and should have as little impact on our well-being as possible. But what tools does Stoicism offer to help us deal with life's challenges? Marcus Aurelius's book, Meditations, is a rich source of ideas that cast a new perspective on experiences that we generally consider harmful. Through his writings, we are able to see our lives in a different light, transforming our perception of the difficulties we face. We can, as he describes, be like the rock that faces the continuous waves of the sea. Within the book Meditations, we find numerous passages that provide us with guidelines for dealing with suffering. Marcus Aurelius stated that the mind is the ruler of the soul, which parallels Buddhist thought, where the historical Buddha taught that the mind is the precursor of everything, and therefore our thoughts determine our feelings. This brings us to a deeper understanding of how our minds play a fundamental role in our emotional experiences. Let's say we are experiencing physical pain, which is a common experience in life. If we fight against this pain, resisting it with all our might, it's possible that we'll make it even more unbearable. What's more, our fear can turn this pain into something bigger than it really is, because we start to fear that it will never go away or even get worse over time. Sometimes our own thoughts can become a greater source of suffering than the physical pain we are experiencing. Therefore, the way we think and react to a challenging situation can aggravate our suffering. Marcus Aurelius expressed the idea that our minds need to maintain an unshakable firmness in the face of the turbulences that affect our bodies, whether mild or intense. Although what he meant by turbulences that affect our bodies is not entirely clear, it seems that he was referring to physical pain and the role of the mind in dealing with it. Most of us dread the idea of suffering bodily injury and generally do our best to avoid any form of physical pain. Stoicism, however, challenges us to not only accept physical pain when it inevitably occurs, but to embrace it as part of our journey. Rather than fearing it, the Stoics saw it as an opportunity to exercise mental fortitude. They believed that while physical pain may be uncontrollable, how we react to it is under our control. This means that when faced with pain, we can choose not only to endure it with courage, but also to find ways to learn lessons from it and use it for our personal growth. Therefore, the Stoic perspective teaches us not only to tolerate physical pain, but to embrace it as a teacher from which we can learn valuable lessons for our lives. Unfortunately, life offers no guarantees that we will never have to face difficult times. It is plausible that we will have to deal with painful illnesses, accidents, or even become victims of violence at some point in our journeys. To a large extent, these circumstances are beyond our control. However, according to Marcus Aurelius, nothing happens to a person that they are unable to bear. Although pain is an inevitable part of the human experience, we can choose whether we allow it to cause us more suffering than the inevitable imposed by the outside world. The Stoics, in their wisdom, encourage us to view these adversities as opportunities for personal growth and self-improvement. When faced with pain, whether physical or emotional, we can draw on our inner fortitude and find the resilience to overcome it. 
Marcus Aurelius believed that our capacity for resistance was a powerful force, capable of facing even the most challenging moments. In this sense, Stoic philosophy reminds us that although we cannot control what happens to us, we always have control over how we choose to react. Therefore, in the midst of pain and adversity, we can find the opportunity to cultivate our mental strength and thus face these difficulties with courage and determination. The intensity of the additional pain we feel is intrinsically linked to our personal evaluations. Marcus Aurelius argued that when physical sensations reach our consciousness, due to the close connection between mind and body, we shouldn't oppose them. After all, sensations are a natural part of experience. However, it is vital that we prevent our mind from starting a process of judgment, classifying these sensations as good or bad. Marcus Aurelius makes a fundamental distinction between the physical sensations we experience and the suffering we create in our mind. He reminds us that bodily pain is a natural part of life, something we can't avoid. However, the real source of suffering lies in our evaluations and judgments about that pain. Therefore, he advises not to resist physical sensations and to avoid any judgment that pain is intrinsically good or bad. If we adopt this perspective and accept pain as a natural part of existence, we can experience sensations without the burden of suffering. In short, pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice we make. It's also possible to say that pain becomes more painful when we aggravate the situation through negative judgments. Marcus Aurelius advised, let the aspect of you that emits these judgments remain silent, even when the body is being afflicted, burned, wounded, or afflicted by disease. In other words, it is essential that we understand that what happens to our body, whether good or bad, is not inherently good or bad. It's as if our body needs to realize that these experiences are a common part of existence without being labeled as strictly good or bad. Although Marcus Aurelius referred to the agitations of the flesh, his reasoning extends to various other forms of pain. When we experience hurt, such as when someone offends us, the insult itself isn't what hurts us. It's the judgment we make of it. Our beliefs shape our judgments. If we believe that no one has the right to offend us, it's natural to feel upset when this happens. However, if we realize that offenses are a part of human coexistence and that we have control over how we react to what others do or say, we are less likely to feel hurt by such situations because they've asked for something that can't happen. Some people are constantly at odds with everything around them. It seems that everything affects them, from the news to their neighbors' conversations to events at work. These people can't help but express their dissatisfaction with what's wrong in the world and in extreme cases even believe that it would be nicer to be dead than to live in such a sad place as our planet Earth. If we find ourselves constantly in conflict with the world around us, it is likely that our beliefs are not in line with reality. Often they are at odds, so if we want to find peace in our minds and end this constant conflict, we need to make a change in our beliefs. A great way to start is by lowering our expectations of the world. Marcus Aurelius, in his Meditations, argues strongly against demanding the impossible, calling this attitude foolish. We cannot expect to receive what is simply not possible. Instead, he encourages us to adopt a realistic perspective, recognizing that the world is full of unpredictable circumstances that are often beyond our control. By adjusting our expectations and accepting that life will bring challenges and obstacles, we are in a better position to face them with serenity and emotional balance. To help you master your emotional control as the Stoics did, I've left a link in the first comment to help you. Constant conflict with the world often stems from the discrepancy between what we want to happen and what actually happens. When our beliefs are too deeply rooted in unrealistic desires and expectations, we encounter resistance and frustration. Therefore, a change in beliefs to align our perspectives with reality is a fundamental step towards achieving greater inner harmony and a more peaceful relationship with the world around us. It is an indisputable truth that asking for the impossible is a strategy destined to fail. However, we often subtly fall into this trap, wishing for things to turn out in ways that are unrealistic and not in keeping with the nature of the world. So-called empty optimists are particularly prone to this mistake. Their excessive optimism makes them hopeful and confident in a future that lacks probability. Having confidence and hope is not a bad thing, but when these feelings are not aligned with reality, disappointment is almost inevitable. To hope for constant good fortune, to ask for the unattainable, to wish for immunity to disease, 
Invulnerability to insults and ridicule is like begging for the impossible. Demanding that we have control over these matters is as futile as a rock trying to hold back the waves that surround it. For a mind that yearns excessively, life becomes a continuous mismatch because reality can never meet these excessive expectations. Marcus Aurelius continually reiterates the concept of providence from a historical point of view. Providence implies that everything that happens in the world is according to a natural plan, which means that all the imperfections we observe are purposeful and therefore an intrinsic part of the order of things. Dishonest, arrogant, ungrateful, envious and shameless individuals coexist with virtues, vices, happiness, sadness, good and evil in the big picture of existence. To wish for the opposite would be a desire that goes against the very nature of things. Marcus Aurelius said, when confronted with someone else's censorship, ask yourself, is a world without censorship conceivable? If the answer is no, then don't seek the unattainable. There must be critical people in the world. The same reasoning applies to someone who is ruthless, trustworthy or otherwise flawed. As long as life persists, there will be sickness and death. As long as there are human beings, there will be those with imperfections. Not seeking the impossible means ceasing the attempt to reshape the universe. This is beyond our reach. No matter how hard we try, the universe will always prevail. If we internalize this perspective, we will learn to value lowering our expectations and refrain from hoping that things will turn out according to our wishes, but rather that they will happen as they naturally unfold. In this understanding, we will find a strength that protects us from unnecessary suffering. Seeing beauty in adversity, we find charm in decay and imperfection. Just look at the cracks in an aging wall or the sinuosity of trees. In doing so, we discover that these details fascinate us. Marcus Aurelius addressed, for example, the topic of bread baked on top of the oven and how the cracks that appear in them add a pleasant touch and stimulate the appetite. He pointed out that the recklessness of nature has its own charm, just like a face marked by the passage of time, a wrinkled apple or the ruins of a city that many consider beautiful, even though they have been subjected to decay. This stoic perspective teaches us to find beauty in imperfection, to appreciate life in all its forms and phases, and to see the passage of time as a natural and enriching aspect of existence. After all, it is imperfection that gives life its authenticity and depth. Therefore, instead of resisting adversity and the passage of time, we can embrace them as opportunities to grow, learn and find charm in what at first glance could be considered decadent. This vision, inspired by the teachings of Marcus Aurelius, invites us to a deeper appreciation of the world around us. Life's journey is often bumpy. Many events that occur don't align with our expectations. Imagine, for example, the start of a relationship full of passion between two people who harbor dreams of a bright future together, only to see that story culminate in tears and goodbyes. Or consider a career full of promise, backed by experience and a string of degrees, which in the blink of an eye can come to an end due to an unexpected illness. Even when everything in life flows smoothly, following the course we had hoped for, we must never forget that eventually we will all face illness or, ultimately, the passage to the afterlife. It is often in difficult times that creative individuals, such as writers, filmmakers, painters, musicians and poets, find inspiration to create works that captivate the world. Instead of rejecting adversity, we can learn to appreciate it, just as we accept the cracks in bread, knowing that both beauty and imperfection are part of the whole. When we seek only what is pleasant and reject what is unpleasant, we are denying nature in its entirety. However, by embracing both good luck and bad luck, we become more resilient in the face of the challenges that life presents us with. What's more, even in the worst of circumstances, we can almost always find positive elements. Adversity can inspire us, remind us of our humanity and change our perspective on life, making us more compassionate towards others. If we can see the beauty in everything around us, even in the situations that challenge us, we will be better prepared to face what fate has in store for us. Often the suffering we experience is the result of our own judgments, since external circumstances are beyond our control. This happens when we attach excessive value to things we can't possess, focusing our attention on ourselves. The way we interpret what is beyond our control can profoundly affect our feelings. For example, when something we consider unfavorable happens in our lives, it's natural to feel bad. Likewise, when we lose something we wanted, we also feel sad. The more rigid and inflexible our judgments are, 
the more vulnerable we become to the fluctuations of our desires and expectations. Not allowing our desires to cause our downfall does not imply that we have any control over what fate has in store for us. Fate acts according to its own will, and we have no influence over that. What we can control, however, is our attitude towards fate. We can choose to accept what fate presents us with, even if it is full of adversity, or we can choose to react with anger and bitterness. A third option is to see the beauty in the circumstances that present themselves. It's up to us to decide how to face what life has in store for us. When it comes to being hurt by the actions of others, we have little control over how people behave around us. However, we can exercise control over how we react to these situations and practice resilience in the face of the world. Instead of clashing with the world or trying to control it, we can follow Marcus Aurelius' advice. He teaches us that we shouldn't get upset when, for example, we face hatred or contempt from other people, because these feelings are their problem, not ours. Our task is to remain calm in these situations and not let ourselves be affected by other people's malice. In this way, we will be better prepared to face any misfortune that life throws at us. Resilience, in this context, is the ability to adapt and recover quickly from challenging situations. Marcus Aurelius reminds us that adversity is an inherent part of life, and our response to these challenges defines our inner strength. Instead of wearing ourselves out with feelings of resentment and anger towards others, we can use these experiences as opportunities to grow, develop our emotional resilience, and strengthen our ability to remain calm in the face of adversity. So, instead of being hurt by the actions of others, we can become more resilient and compassionate, whatever life throws at us. From a stoic perspective, adversity in itself is not detrimental to our sense of well-being. It is only harmful if we allow it to be. Choose not to be harmed, and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed, and you haven't been harmed. And if you're still feeling harmed, it's probably because you're too generous. If you're too generous, you'll create bigger problems. See if you're being too generous in this video. Click on the video and watch it now.